Okay, more examples of writing half equations and then using them, putting the two halves together to write the full equation. Okay, now the first one we're going to look at here is um, a, dis a disproportionation reaction. And remember, that's when one element gets oxidized and reduced at the same time. Okay, so what we have got is sodium thiosulfate here, um, which uh, you're probably familiar with. Um, uh, you will have probably done this experiment GCSC disappearing cross experiment you add a bit of acid and it goes cloudy it goes yellow cloudy there and that is because we have formed sulfur solid in there okay and you also get a bit of an unpleasant smell because you make SO2 gas and that comes out there so that is the reaction so um, let's uh, write down what's happening so sodium thiosulfate well we know sodium is always a one plus ion so we're just gonna we're gonna get rid of the spectator ions of sodiums and just start off the thiosulfate ion which is that it's got to be two minus here because you've got two sodiums okay so um what happens to one is that gets converted to sulfur and what happens to another one of them that gets converted to sulfur dioxide uh, which is a gas, but it's pretty soluble. Right, so let's do the first one first. We balance the uh, element of interest. We need to put a two, don't we, in front of the sulfur, because we've got two sulfurs on the left. Balance oxygen, so we're gonna need three H2Os on this side. Um, number three, we balance for the hydrogen, so you want six H plus there. Um, and then the charges. So on the right, we have got zero. On the left, we have got plus four, so we need four electrons on this side of the equation. That's step four. We check our oxidation numbers. Oxidation number sulfur in thiosulfate is plus two. Um, and in sulfur, the element's going to be zero. So it has been reduced yet, yeah, and it's gained electrons, so that's good. And each sulfur is going to gain two electrons because it's going from plus two to zero, and that's four, so that's all right. That's good. Okay, let's do the next bit then. So the other side of sulfate is going to go to uh, SO2. Right, so balance the element of interest. Obviously, we need two there. Number two, balance our oxygens. Well, we've got four on the right and only one there, so we need an H2O here, don't we? Um, then we have got, we need to balance for hydrogen, so we need to put two H pluses on this side of the equation. Uh, and then four, balance our charges. So we've got two minus on the left, and we've got two plus on the right. So that means we've got to turn that into two minus on the right by adding four electrons. So it's four plus four electrons there. Okay, check the oxidation numbers. Um, sulfur in thiosulfate is plus two. In sulfur dioxide, it's going to be plus four. So it has lost, it's oxidized from plus two to plus four, and it's good, that's losing the electrons there. Is it the right number of electrons? It's four, yeah, each one is gonna go from plus two to plus four, two, each, two for each sulfur, it's two of them. Next step, step, of course, is to combine those two, isn't it? Now we've got four electrons there and four electrons there, so all we need to do is add them together. So we've got SO2, one thiosulfate there and one here, so that's gonna be two thiosulfates. plus we're going to have six H plus in there and one water from this one uh, and that's going to give us two sulfurs two sulfur dioxides and it's going to give us three waters and it's going to give us two H plus now we've got uh, H plus on both sides of the equation we have got six there and two there so that means we can get rid of those two and say that's the same as having four here isn't it so i'm going to four h plus there okay same with the waters we have got one water here and three there so i can get rid of those waters and change that into a two h2o so there is our final ionic equation. And you can see there we can divide everything there by two, can't we? So we would write uh, one thiosulfate plus two protons 
goes to a sulfur, an SO2, and an H2O. And we can rub all that out. Uh, and if you're worried about the spectator ions there, well, it's pretty straightforward, isn't it? Because we're going to have, right, we've got two sodiums for the thiosulfate. Let's, we're adding hydrochloric acid, so the two, two chlorides for that. So if you wanted to write a full equation, you would write down, well, you'd, I'll write it down in, in blue above here. You'd write down Na2S2O3 plus um, 2HCl goes to S, SO2, H2O, and two sodium chlorides. But as I say, this black one, would be the one that we want really isn't it yeah okay right let us um, then move on to the next one so i will get all of that i think and erase it right Right, the next one we've got then is this um, uh, <clears throat> this reaction here. I'll move it up a little bit. Right, okay. So, um, right, what have we got here? We've got some nice purple potassium permanganate here. Yeah, okay, very dark purple and potassium manganate seven is the proper name that gives you a clue the, the oxidation number of manganese is plus seven and that's acidified with sulfuric acid now here we've got a nice delicate green solution of iron two sulfate so it's the fe2 plus ions which give it the green color the sulfate ions, spectator ions are not going to do anything and when you add the manganate the little bit of the manganate well, first of all, the manganate, the nice purple color of the manganate disappears because the manganese now becomes uh, Mn2+, which is colorless, okay? And the iron goes from Fe2 up to Fe3, which is this, uh, it's not a very nice yellowy, rusty sort of color. Okay, so that is what we're doing there. So let's do our manganate equation first. So... Um, potassium for manganate, well, you know, potassium is one plus, so it's just going to be MnO4 minus, isn't it? Spectator iron, K plus, forget about that. Uh, and that, we're told, it goes to the Mn2 plus. So what we do, we balance for the element of interest. Manganese don't need to do anything, one on each side. Balance for the oxygens, well, we need four H2Os on this side. That means we need eight H pluses there. Do your charges, that means you need 5E minus there. Do your oxidation numbers, well, manganese is plus 7, that's plus 2, so it's gone down by 5, it's reduced, reduction is gain, yeah, it's gaining those, so that's all good. Let's see what happens to the Fe2 plus 1, that's really easy, so that's going to be Fe2 plus goes to Fe3 plus. So we balance the element, yeah, we don't need to do anything there. Balance for oxygens, no oxygens, no hydrogens, just do the charges. Well, that means we need to put a negative electron there. Right, let's combine the two half equations. Um, um, right, so we've got to times this one by five, haven't we? Yeah, because that one is only one electron and this is five. So the final equation would be manganate ions. I'll stick with green. MnO4 minus plus 8H plus plus 5Fe2 plus goes to Mn2 plus and 5Fe3 plus and 4H2O. Okay, if you're really worried about spectator ions, I won't just remember what we're going to have K pluses for the manganate here. We're going to have sulfates for the, you know, because it was sulfuric acid. We're going to have sulfates for the iron two. We're going to have sulfates for the iron three. Um, and there'll be a sulfate for the, so you form manganese two sulfate. You form iron three sulfate 
what happens to the potassium? Well, the potassium will also, that's good, you've got some there, you will end up with some potassium sulfate as well on that side. Okay, but we won't bother writing that final equation down. Right, okay, now, uh, if you really feel like you want more, uh, I won't be offended if you stop the video now, but if you really want one more, we've got another one. So let's get rid of this. And get the other one. See, I've got some purple manganate again. Put that there. Right, so um, right, some of this I'm not going to do because it's exactly the same as the other one, right? Right, so what we're doing is we're going to get manganate, purple manganate with some acid in there, yeah, and we're going to add it to hydrogen peroxide, okay? When you add it to hydrogen peroxide solution, that's in water, uh, you lose the purple color of the manganate because the manganate gets converted or gets reduced to Mn2+, plus, and you see lots of frothing and oxygen gas is evolved. So the manganate half equation we've done already, which is, we just did it a minute ago, but I'll write it down as complete. It's MnO4 minus and it's 8H plus and five electrons goes to Mn2 plus and 4H2O. And that's it. Right, let's see what happens to the hydrogen peroxide. That's a bit more tricky. Hydrogen peroxide is also a bit of a tricky one. So H2O2. And that's going to get oxidized to oxygen O2. Now, balance with the element of interest. Well, the element of interest is oxygen because, well, let's just have a look before we start here. The oxidation of oxygen changes here, and that's not, in all the other half equations we've come across, it doesn't. Because look, the oxidation of oxygen there is minus two, it's minus two. The oxygen doesn't change, but in this one with hydrogen peroxide, it does. Because hydrogen peroxide, peroxide remember the oxidation number of oxygen is minus one. Whereas O2 gas, it's zero. So it has changed. Right. So we balance for the element interest oxygen. We've got two options. That's fine. Balance the oxygen atoms by adding H2O. We don't need to do that this time. Balance H atoms by adding H pluses. Well, we've got two H's on the left and none on the right. So I need to put here two H plus. Um, now balance for the charges. We need two E minus there. Okay, now, um, right. So we've got our two half equations. Now we can see to balance them, we all need to go. We need to go that one times by two, and that one times by five, because that will give us ten electrons on. You know, we've got five electrons there. We've got two there. The only way you can do it is by times in one by two or one by five. So. Uh, now, before we do that, I just want to mention something about hydrogen peroxide. Usually you think of hydrogen peroxide <coughs> as an oxidizing agent. But here, it's behaving as a reducing agent. Now, why is it behaving as a reducing agent? Well, because the oxygen gets oxidized, doesn't it? Yeah, the oxygen here has got an oxidation number of minus one. And here it's zero, so it's gone up, so it's been oxidized, and of course it's lost the electrons, oxidation is lost. So hydrogen peroxide here is behaving as a reducing agent. And it can only do that, normally it behaves as an oxidizing agent, is because manganate, this stuff here, well that's behaving as an oxidizing agent, because that, yeah, that gets reduced. That's a very strong oxidizing agent. such a strong oxidizing agent, it can oxidize hydrogen peroxide, okay? <clears throat> Which most things can't do that. Right, so back to this, balancing it then. Okay, so we need two manganates, I'll do it in blue actually. Two manganates, 16 H pluses. The electrons are going to cancel out, so I'm going to ignore them. We need five H2O2s. Uh, we're going to form uh, two Mn2 pluses, eight H2Os, 
and we are going to form five oxygens and 10 H pluses. So you can see we've got H pluses on both sides. We have got 10 there and six there. So we can get rid of these and change that to that 16 to a six. So we've got six H plus there. And that is our balanced equation. All right, would you want to worry about spectator ions? Well, it's going to be potassiums for that one. It's going to be sulfates for the H pluses. The manganese, that's going to be, that will have a sulfate. So you form manganese sulfate. And what happens to the rest of all that um, potassium? Well, that's going to form, all well, the other sulfates going to form potassium sulfate. Yeah. And you can put those in yourself if you like and see that it is balanced, but I'll get rid of that. Okay, so that is the end of doing those um, writing full equations from half equations. I think you can see if you look at the you know look at the the ratios in which these things react, and if you're trying to balance that, you know just by trial and error, you probably take quite a long time to do it. So that's another useful thing you can use oxidation numbers for.